Today, I have the absolute pleasure to be speaking with a leading lady that is bossing her way to ITV's prime time slot. A Londoner at heart with Nigerian roots, she's proving to be a versatile global star. Yes, honey. Taking on action in Marvel's Luke Cage, dropping it like it's hot in Girls Trip, having us on the edge of our seats in Amazon Prime's Them, and now bringing all of the black girl magic and lots of drama in ITV's latest series, Riches. I'm so excited to be joined by Deborah Ayarinde. How are you? I'm good. That was 10 out of 10, you know. I, I was I was a little, like, where's she going to go? But I loved it. I loved it. I got you, girl. I, I got the girl. And I'm so girl. happy to have you on Thank the mainstream. You. Welcome to the mainstream. Thank you so much. How Thank are you. you? I'm good, you know. Today's like a really, even though I've had a lot to do today, it's a pretty chill, like, day for me. Totally, I don't know what... That's good, okay, get yeah. comfortable. We're going to get comfortable, that's what I love. I'm here for a comfortable chill yeah, that day. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And yeah, we want to talk about and celebrate all of your achievements. So yeah. first of all, I have to say a huge congratulations to you and the team for officially bringing Riches to ITV. Come on, this Thank is prime you. time, Thank baby. You. Thank you. And um, do you know what? I have to say in advance, I've seen every episode and you are definitely giving black excellence. And we're going to be talking a lot m- more about that a little bit later. But um, let's talk about young Deborah. Okay. <laughs> we're going to go back. <laughs> Baby Deborah. Yes. Because as, as much as you are a Londoner, you were born yeah. here. You actually moved to California when you was about eight. Yeah. 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 yeah around the age of eight. And obviously that's a huge change it for was a young girl. I mean, that's like the middle of primary school. Right. So much change. A, and a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. And I think for me, it was, it was young enough to, if I wanted to adjust to um, this new place, but mm-hmm. it was old enough to where I had a life and friends yeah. and my neighborhood and my school. And, you know, so, and, and honestly like London and the Bay area, like night and day, very different. So it was a completely different everything. Yeah. You know, um, so for me, I don't think I ever like fully got adjusted, but I think it kind of worked for me in the long run and just, just being okay with just being different. Yeah. And, like, standing out and kind of finding a home everywhere, you know, yeah. everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It's, it's, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And mm. again, you, you, you're kind of finding yourself at that age as well. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably a Londoner. Yeah. So how was it being the English girl <laughs> at school? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I felt like I was really, really shy as well. Was you? Yeah, I was really, really shy as well. And so, like, for me, being a Londoner, being Nigerian, mm-hmm. being like, I was just, I felt like I just didn't fit in. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, I've, I've told people this, but, like, when I started school... Um, I used to eat lunch in the bathroom. Like, no, by myself. don't yeah, say I was that. that. I was that kid. Oh I was gosh. so shy. Um, and I made friends along the way. Yeah. And, like, it was really, really uh, nice. And people I'm still in contact with to, to, to this day. But, um, but yeah, I always knew that London was home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I could have just, that's yeah, huge. Yeah, it just felt, like, so connected. And when I moved back, it just wasn't, it wasn't a thing to get kind of readjusted, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe you said you were shy. Oh, yeah. Because you bring so much personality, really? <laughs> so much energy. So being shy, come on, the roles you've played as well uh, no. require. But you know what? That's the alter ego of it. You know okay. what I mean? Like, I feel like, don't get me wrong. Like, when I feel comfortable with people, comfortable with a situation, I've known people for a long time. Like, yeah. it's nothing. But in new situations, yeah. I'm like, you know, like, I hate, even the word like networking like, oh god yeah no one likes this. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be drinks available like, there uh, needs to be. i can't like i like meeting people organically like, yeah so it's kind of worked i've kind of i think like most adults you know when you have personality traits that you might have got made fun of before yeah. or, like that didn't really go well amongst other kids yeah when you become an adult you kind of hopefully you kind of learn how to use it for your good so like being yeah. shy you know i kind of used it to learn how to be more observant okay i've always been observed i've always been a watcher you okay. know and as an adult that's like that is something that is so major key like when you go into situations just taking a second to just observe yeah you know everything you you you'll learn a lot so yeah 
it's just but yes still to this day still like Aww. yeah stuff that you don't think makes me really nervous makes me really nervous okay I guess, well. well i would have never guessed <laughs> I mean, so okay. It sounds like you you overcame a lot as yeah. as a young young child, yeah. young adult. So, at what point did you decide that maybe acting could be a part of your life? Can I be honest? I don't think there was ever a moment where I decided it. Okay, like, I know people say like I didn't choose the game. The game chose ah. me. <laughs> the game chose. No, literally, <laughs> like I, I feel like. I feel like it was something that was just always in my spirit, you okay. know, always in my heart to be a performing artist, not necessarily acting, but to be a performing artist was always there. Yeah. I always knew, even my mom and my parents always knew it. That's amazing. You know? And so, um, yeah, whenever I like thought about myself as an adult when I was a kid, it, I was always an artist. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so, amazing. So what were the things that... How did you bring that to fruition, I guess? Right, so there were moments where I had to decide, like, what path I wanted to go in. Like, for example, um, you know, I started out with music, you know. Really? When I was younger, younger. Are we talking singing? Yeah, yeah. You can hold and a note, girl. Yeah, don't let me do no. it. I'm not going to do it. Because <laughs> uh, okay, I felt like that was going to be... No, don't no, let, we, don't we, let. Just, It's a chill day, like you said. It's a chill day. Chill don't day, worry. let me just... <laughs> No, but like, you know, that was my first and is my first love. Wow. Um, and my mom would get us into like, into acting, into playing violin, piano, dance, all these things. Just Your Nigerian us. mom? Yeah. Love that. I know. She's a bit of a free spirit though. Okay. She's, she's different. She's different. Yeah, that's, that's she's, special. She's, yeah, I she's love a bit that. different. Like, I, I love Not the mom. doctor, not the scholar. Uh, um, <laughs> no. No, she said that my free. daughter will be a superstar. Wow. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I love that. <laughs> no, That's literally, amazing. like she kept us in the arts, and so okay. And as a result, my I have two sisters. My younger sister is a singer songwriter. My older sister, even though she works in tech, she also dances as well. She's danced for NBA, NFL. Like, wow. Yeah, we stayed in the arts, and so um, yeah, there wasn't really a moment where I'd, I decided to be an artist but there were moments where I was like okay this is how we're gonna do it like for example when I um graduated from Howard mm -hmm. so I um there was a moment I'll never forget it I think it was my senior year and we're at a job fair because hmm. basically at this time like people are figuring out what they're gonna do of course after they graduate of course and people are getting internships obviously it'd be like PAs and work at like studios and all that stuff like that and I stood back and I watched all of this and I was having such anxiety. Oh, yeah. in I my, get it though. Because in my yeah. heart, I was like, this isn't the path. Like, I, what am I going to do? I know yeah. I don't want to do any of this and I have to be true to myself. Yeah. And so one of my professors actually saw me and came home and was like, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? And I told him my dilemma. I was like, I really feel like I need to just go straight into acting. Like, wow. just really, you know, um, dedicate myself to that. Because I had been like acting but still in uni mm. like i would go from dc to new york on the bus to go to auditions oh right yeah okay but this was like game time because obviously <laughs> you don't have the comfort of uni you know yeah yeah and so she was like do it like what what i mean you already have your answer like do it that's amazing and from that moment i was like okay so what we're gonna do and it has not been an easy journey but like you know i yeah stuck with it you're proving how important it is to have people around you yeah. that will encourage yeah. you to the max yeah. from your mom yeah. to your sisters to yeah. your yeah. lecturer. Yeah. yeah, That's so important. Literally, um, I have been so blessed mm. with the people I have around me, but I think that part of that is also having the discernment to know who shouldn't be around me, I think. Facts. You know, like <laughs> yes. keeping my spirit and my energy and my space mm -hmm. Pure, it makes it stand out so clearly when someone's in that space yeah. and they're not for you or they're not supportive of you. They have a different kind of spirit mm. going on. You know, you know when a hater's around. You know, you know. <laughs> we all know when the haters you know, around. And when yeah. you when you're in tune, you know, um, it just makes it easy to just like you know yeah. to make cuts when you need to. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, speaking of that, you mentioned. Graduating from Howard yeah, University. You, Come on, girl. You. With your degree in film production. Yeah, that, with yeah. honors, my ass. Thank you. With honors. <laughs> Thank you. Which is huge. It's incredible. You put the work Thank in. You. But like just to tap in a little bit more into that whole 
making decision to be yeah. an actress. Yeah. How do you actually navigate getting those auditions, going right. to the gigs? Like, do you remember your first paid job? My, yes, I do. Oh, what was it? Um, my first paid job was <laughs> was actually uh, Tyler Perry's Meet the Brown. <gasps> no, <laughs> how is that your that? first paid job? But can I say this? It was actually a perfect first job and i'll tell you yes. why because like literally it was just like everyone was just so kind and nurturing and i didn't know what i was doing like oh yes i had my degree but i still was very green and as far as like actually being on an actual professional yes. like set and they were just so kind we prayed before we started film like not this it, is too much i was I literally that. like what where do i go from here because i know they're not really doing this on yeah, set so that's true it was um it was a great first experience for me. I was so nervous. Oh, I was so nervous. Can we just... Tyler Perry's Meet, Meet the, Browns the Browns is huge. I know. So for your first job, that I must know. have felt like... It was... Honestly, it was... Um, and especially because I was living in Atlanta at the time. Okay. And so, like, in town, like, that, like, Tyler, getting getting on anything Tyler Perry was, like, the big, you know. Still getting on anything Tyler Perry yeah, is. I'm trying yeah. to beat that man. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, honestly. And shout out to him for, like, the moves that yeah, he's made. 100%. Even, like, being there then and seeing where he's, like, gone now. Studio owner, just Are bought BET. Me? VH, what this it is, is levels. So, it is so inspiring. I will say, like, it is so inspiring. And I think whether anyone, like, you know, is a fan of of his work or mm -hmm. not, like, you can't, you can't come for like the moves that he's made, exactly. and the ways that he's taken up space, definitely. And so, like, for me, I felt like that was just really inspiring to just be on that set for my first time. Yeah, like, yeah. So I was. So I can't even, to this oh. day, I actually cannot even watch that episode. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I can't. My mom wants to watch all of my work, but of I course. literally cannot because it's... <laughs> okay, it's your first job. I get it. I get it. Because in, in comparison to now... You can barely hear me on that episode. <laughs> oh my God, I can't even think about it. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you've come a long way, girl. You've come a long way. And um, you mentioned living in Atlanta because yeah. there was another achievement that you have. Oh. Can you talk to me about being named uh, Jezebel Magazine? Oh. <laughs> 50 most beautiful Atlanta. Yes. Oh my <laughs> what God. What is this place? Yes. Yeah, so Jezebel magazine, I think it's, I think it's, um, I am on luxury. Don't quote me, but they, every year they do this list of 50 most beautiful Atlanta. Come on, beautiful. I know, right? <laughs> and, so, and so I was on this list. I don't remember what year it was. 2014. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I got you. Uh, <laughs> so yes, yeah, 2014. Oh um, my gosh. I was on this list and it was, it was, um, yeah, it was kind of nice. Was that okay? So <laughs> I'm assuming in Atlanta, that's a big deal. <laughs> People are fine, you know. I went, I went hey. on their socials today. They're still like sharing every like, year, announcing it's a thing. Like, so for you, was that like, oh, ooh, people was, know my name now? <laughs> Honestly, um, well, first of all, Atlanta, like, there's so many beautiful people yes. in Atlanta. Like, you gotta come correct if you live there. Like, yeah, honestly, I hear that. not one day off. <laughs> Not one day, <laughs> ah, but um, but uh, yeah, it was just nice to like. I, I think for me, any moment where I can represent like young girls and women who look like me uh -huh. is a win for yep. me. Like any any setting where I can be, where they're like, "Oh, you and people look like you are beautiful." Yeah, for me, that means the world. Yeah, you know, and so um. Yeah, that, that felt really good. Because obviously, like, growing up, there were moments where I didn't see my beauty on screen. Of I didn't course. see that. I didn't feel that um, as a result. So, you know, fast forward to 2014, being named one of the, you know, for me, that was, like, a really beautiful moment. Yeah, that's yeah. so nice. I yeah. love that. I absolutely yeah. love that. We need some some of that, you know, yeah. in the UK. But we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but do you know what? Can I be honest? You're black British at heart. Yeah. And as much as you've got, you know, your American connects and yeah, you're tapping into all that, yeah. kind, you can do a great, a mean, I'm sure you can do a mean New York accent, a mean Atlanta accent. Oh, yeah, okay. But what about your British accent? Oh, my God. Because you know Americans <laughs> love a black Brit. I know. And they're always, always butchering our accent. You know what's wild? When I'm here, <laughs> people say I sound American. When I'm there, people say I sound British. So I'm like, I don't know even. Do you know what? Me. The whole time I've been speaking to you, I didn't even, 
even consider what what does your accent sound like yeah i mean i just yeah I don't know. Okay, well, listeners, but what does Deborah say? Because you probably speak to so many people that are there and here. Yeah, true. And so you're kind of desensitized. Like, even here, yeah. both the American and the British accents don't stand out to me because yeah, I'm desensitized to it. Yeah. You know, I would say more now, American accents stand out to me more now because I've been here. Fair. You yeah, know? I get that. But usually, they don't stand out to me. I have to actually listen to hear, like, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, People, I've noticed that people who talk to a lot of Americans or talk to a lot of people, you know, British people. Maybe that's what it they're is. They're desensitized. Yeah. But when I'm here and they're not desensitized, they're like, you sound American. <laughs> oh, my God. And there, they're like, you don't sound like you're from here. Yeah, I can like, imagine. When you're there in comparison to the thick yeah, southern, yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's different. Yeah, it's different. But have you ever used your, your British accent to kind of, you know, use it as a little black card? Like, <laughs> Like, this might give me some bookings. I've got the good what? English accent. You know what? I only do it when they ask me. To really? Honest. Yeah, like, if they are like, okay, do it, do something in your, like, regular accent, I just do my middle, because I feel like I have a bit of a blend, so I mm. just do that, you know? Pick whatever you want to pick. Yeah. And, um, but, like, if they ask me to do American or, like, New York or whatever, I'll do that. If they ask me to do, like, a London accent, I'll do that. The only part that I think that I have trouble with because I grew up in East London, like, that's the only, like... <laughs> what, the cockney comes out? Yeah, no, that's the only one that, like... <laughs> unless you ask me to do, like, a kind of neutral one, like, yeah. I... If if it's that, if it's not that, it's going to be... I don't know how to do the North and the West. And yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that one. <laughs> She's an East Londoner, ladies yeah, and gents. so I'm like, <laughs> let me know. Let me know. I love let me that. Know. No, I absolutely love that. And um, I think it's really interesting that You've had the experience of living in America. Yeah. And I think for a lot of black talent, whether yeah. it's actors, whether it's like film directors, all that kind yeah. of stuff, there's always that that aspiration to yeah. move to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're doing it differently. The opposite, yeah. You're literally doing it the opposite way. Yeah. And like for you, do you feel like you've seen the difference in the opportunities though in America or in the UK? Or, you know, yeah. is it worth if someone was listening and they thought, mm, maybe I should move to to California as well? Mm. What would you what would you say I to them? I think that for me, so I'm 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 Christian. I'm spiritual. I'm you know, God is the center of my life. Amen. So I follow. <laughs> okay, I follow that. Mm. I follow him. Okay. If he tells me to go, that's where I go. Love that. Literally, that's been my life. That for as long as I can remember, that's my story. Yeah. So, for me, it was move back to London. For someone else, it might be go to LA. You know. So I can't really. Like one, it's not one uh, shoe fits all. I hear you know what I'm saying? So it's like, whatever that is for someone else, they should follow that. As long as they're following that. Yeah. That's good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I'll also say I've been really, I'm really, really blessed because I came back to London at the right time. And the right time means that I've come back at a time where I have opportunities coming from America. Yes. Opportunities coming from here, yes. from, you know, from everywhere. And also, like, being able to hop freely between both countries, like, that is a beautiful blessing. 100%. You know? And so um, it's it's hard for me to comment on the opportunities, like, whether they're less or more here. Yeah. Um, but I will say that I've spoken to a lot of people and, you know, there and here, there's not enough opportunities for us. That's the point. There's not yeah, enough. Not enough. And we don't need to fight each other for that. Yeah. We need to, you know, figure out how we can be a part of changing that or call to task the people who have shut a lot of us out. Yeah. You know, not each other. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, just coming back, I knew that like one of the things that um, I would say has been one of my assignments, so to say, so to speak is to create opportunities, oh. you know, for different people in the diaspora, you know, both here and over there and in Nigeria and, blah, 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 you know, just make sure that, that I am part of the solution rather than, definitely, you know, just taking what's mine and just going and living my best life. It's like, no, 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 you've been blessed so you can be a blessing as well. Yes. You get me? So, like, yeah, that's, yeah. 
that's powerful oh, thank you so powerful <laughs> i love that you're doing that because yeah your passion can be a purpose as well to right. help others so right. that's a beautiful thing right. you mentioned actually being able to work in both the us and the uk yeah so the question is is this through like having agents in like both the uk and us because yeah. i know that a lot of people again the same thing a lot of people yeah. are thinking oh how do i get an american yeah, yeah, agent yeah. and yeah. do i need a visa and all that kind of thing yeah. like have you had more success having agents both sides of the of the Atlantic, I guess. Um, well, you know, I moved back to London about two and a half years ago. And when I was, so I got my first agent here when I uh, was planning to move back. Okay. So I got here like a few months in advance of like moving back. Good plan. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, because I was like, I'm going to be here. And like, obviously, there are some opportunities because a lot of the agents here have good relationships with, casting producers Definitely. all these things they'll know about things before america gets it they'll know you know what really I mean? yeah because obviously like if you're with an agency for example who also represents like writers yeah directors they're gonna know about a project before it even gets to america very true you know or if they're trying to cast something that may not have a high budget but it's a really powerful project they're going to want to cast like right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not use that budget trying to find someone else if they yeah, can help it. That's true. So I think it's important to, if you're going to be somewhere like really be there. Yeah. You know? So I wasn't going to be here and not really have like ears to the ground being like, you know, Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? That's step, You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been, I have really, really great reps who like just, they work really well together and they're always, listening see what's going on yeah come on stay and booked and busy yeah listen <laughs> make sure you know and so so yeah i think it is a, a great benefit to have if you can help it have reps in in both definitely yeah. definitely well it's working for you girl Thank because you. we've definitely seen you scoop up some incredible roles um i mentioned a few like marvel's luke cage um the iconic girls trip come on <laughs> oh you gotta do this that, you no, it's the dance off the a a a oh that my dance god off that does everything <laughs> I love that. Yo. No, how was that? Okay. Because you, you, you was with, come on, we've got Queen Latifah, we've got yeah. Jada Pinkett, we've got Tiffany Haddish, yeah. we've got like so many amazing women. Yeah. And like, so what was I that actually experience? I didn't know that there was even going to be a dancer. <gasps> what? For a long time. Was it improvised? No. Oh, okay. No, no. Actually, no, there was choreography. Really, but it was like <laughs> shortly before we actually had to do it that we practiced. Thank God I can dance. Like, thank God. Literally. <laughs> but yeah but um but it was great like the ladies were just so amazing yeah they just really were so sweet it was hard playing the enemy yeah because they imagine. were really sweet and i just watched them you know again yeah. being observant like i use the opportunity to just watch them and see yeah. how they like because they were re that was a job where i can say i felt like they really enjoyed themselves definitely and so i learned on that job how to do great work but also have fun man yeah have fun because if you're not going to have fun why do this thing this is so true why do it you so know true. so i watched them like and i watched them just have fun like they were laughing at themselves yeah like, i can imagine you know so it was just really beautiful to like be a part of that and yeah like oh my god i still get like <laughs> love <laughs> Uh, girls trip no because it's it that was a film for us yeah it was like that was, was black so girls fun. having fun like literally that bucket list of we've got to have the yeah. ultimate girls trip yeah like i yeah. told i want to go to essence fest it's on my list need to go. do you know what i'm saying it's you on my list <laughs> essence fest if you need a host holler but, <laughs> <laughs> but no like this just goes to show like you know you you definitely had your your ears to the ground yeah. you got great opportunities i mean that's just one of you you played alongside uh cynthia arrivo and yes. janelle Monet and harriet yeah. and the the roles just seem to just really be really good positioning for you and it all led towards i, I gotta say the the one that had everyone talking about you them on Amazon Prime, which is a huge success. Yeah. And um, people talk about getting that break. Yeah. The big break. That yeah. always, and I've, you've mentioned so many, like, you know, Meet the Brands, there's so many other shows I'm sure I haven't even mentioned. Yeah. But for you, what do you think was the key role that kickstarted it all and kind of got the ball rolling for like mm. the casting agents, the producers, the directors mm. to be like, we need Deborah? Mm, 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 mm. You know what? I think um, for some people, a break happens just one thing and you're everywhere yeah right? 
And for some other people like myself, I feel like it's a tick, 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 tick. So for me, I feel like Girls Trip got me on certain lists. Really? And not Girls Trip, excuse me, before Girls Trip, Luke Cage. Oh, okay, cool. Luke Cage, I mean, that's, that was huge. Luke Cage got me on certain lists, and, and they, it got me recognized by certain people. I feel like even Luke Cage, I feel like Luke Cage helped me get Girls Trip to be honest, because wow. it was like, it made me a little bit more recognizable. Yes, you know? definitely, definitely. Um, and so cast and directors and things were paying attention. Luke Cage was the first time that I would go out and people would actually recognize me. Oh, that's work, amazing. You know? Um, and I feel like Girls Trip brought it another level. Yeah. And then I feel like, um, I don't think Harriet per se, because I've, my character was so different, looks so different than how I who look you look yeah what you, you look what I mean? like yeah so I feel of like a lot of people have to actually read the credits to see like yeah all that too you know um but I feel as though them was the the role and I knew it when I got it of it course of a lifetime yeah you know it was the role that just took things to a whole other level I mean it was my first lead role it was my first um I think role of that Mm. it was my first like proper press run okay we're like i was representing a, th- a, a a thing yeah you know yeah so there were a lot of pressures with it but it was it was like okay it's, it's go time like all this preparation you've been doing it's time you yeah. know um it was the first time that i had to be conscious about my moves when i go out that is a point it was the yeah. first time. people are noticing you now it was the first time yeah. that like i've been outside and people actually freak out oh my gosh like i like you're Deborah. <laughs> this, oh, like, oh, you're Olivia. <laughs> 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 me yeah. i'm like who are they you know what i mean but literally it was the first time that that like i had that experience and and you know what's interesting even though um that my character lucky and them is so different from who i am yeah and she has a lot of similarities, but very different in the fact that she's a mother and she's, you know, just 50, his housewife, yeah, all course. these things. It was the first time that people started to be like, instead of, oh, you're this character, you're the person in this, yeah. you're Deborah. Okay. It was That's the first time that people started to really, really be like, oh, so you're the same person from this, from this, from this. Because, you know, you mentioned before, like, I have made very strategic choices. Yeah. To make sure my characters go from A to Z. Yeah. You know, to keep that variety going, to not be put in a box. Love I mean, that. That, is, that is very much so on purpose. Yeah. And That's so, great. um, then was the first time that people started to put, connect the dots and be like, oh, wait a minute. Like, you're the same person that's been doing all, I can't believe the same girl from them as the same girl from Girls Trip. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, I would definitely say them. I mean, that, it was a huge role. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's a horror, it, it takes yeah. you on that emotional roller coaster. Yeah. And like you said, like, you know, you're really showing your versatility. Um, why are you getting these kind of roles? Like, why are you mm-hmm. going from comedy for, to horror mm-hmm. to drama? Like, what, what, what kind of impact do you want to leave with, yeah. with each role? I mean, you said A to Z have right, some right, character development. Right, but right. for you, why these characters? Well, because I want to make sure that people know Oh, that is the best Because the thing is, it, no, it's, it's, it's true because I think that, you know, people, hmm, I know what I want to say, but I'm, I'm going to say it very carefully. Spirit leader. Yeah. <laughs> people, so for the longest time, there's been a certain group of people that have um, been in the lead when it comes to media. They've been at the forefront, they've been in the center of the frame. Mm-hmm. And they have been the ones deciding how people who are not them are portrayed, and oftentimes it's those those portrayals are very limited. Oftentimes, racist, sexist, colorist, all kind of ists, right? Yeah. And so, there's this thing happening now where people are taking the mic back and telling their own stories. Um, I think social media has helped with that. A lot yeah. of things along the way have helped with that. People telling their own stories, and I think that. You know, it just makes sense. If when we see ourselves, for example, through our own eyes, it's not confusing that I could 
be one person and play a doctor and yeah. play the girl at the club that stole somebody's husband <laughs> and play like a 50s housewife and play because we know people like this of course all, or i could be the ceo of a beauty brand yeah that's not confusing but to people who have a very limited scope of who we are that's confusing mm. and oftentimes when people have a limited scope of a group of people that's what makes often makes way for uh, prejudice yes agreed because they don't see you like they see themselves yeah you know they think oh i'm human and i have these complexities but you're not you're human but not in the same way i am <laughs> yeah. you get what i'm saying yeah. so when you place people who you may not necessarily see in these roles it opens i feel like life imitates art yeah it opens people's views to see like actually that person why why wasn't that why did i think that that role couldn't be asian or couldn't be this or couldn't be but why did i think that yeah you know and um for me that is why i consistently am like yo no i did that last time i'm not doing that because people yeah. love to like ask you to do the the same thing a million times really yeah Okay. And I at least like to give some time between uh, between yeah that you know, doing sense. the same thing and also like it's not fun to do the same thing. Over. I, if I was going to do that. that, I might as well not do what I'm doing. Like I want to be able to jump into different roles and characters and like that have a new sense. challenge, you know. So so yeah, that's the reason why that choice has been made. Oof, yes, girl, that yeah. is exactly what we needed to hear. You can be anywhere. You can be can. anything. <laughs> actually can and it really makes you think when you see someone and you i mean even i have to check myself sometimes when someone tells me like their what they do or their lives or whatever and i'm mm. like oh i didn't think that yeah but why didn't i think that yeah because the images of what i saw of that person and what they do and who they are is not what that looks like and that needs to be changed yeah. you know so there's a long way to go of course a long way course. to go but we've we've, we've made some progress Definitely. Well, I mean, you've entered your boss girl era, <laughs> <laughs> playing uh, Nina Richards uh, in no. Richards. I am so happy to see you in this role, mm -hmm. to see the family. Can, can we talk about the black excellence? Because the fits, yeah. the hair, oh, yeah. the makeup, yeah. the glamour, yeah. darling. <laughs> You guys were giving it. Thank you. Thank and it's you. so good to see. So let's talk about yeah. the character of Nina. Like she is All right. boss girl 101. Yeah. She's sexy. She's fierce. Yeah. Tell me about this character. So she, like you said, she's sexy. She's fierce. She's the <laughs> boss babe. I think beneath the surface, she has like a longing for belonging that I can relate to. Like she doesn't really know where she fits. Right. Mm. So like um, she was born in London, like me, moved to America, like me. And has now come back, like me. <laughs> but not for the same reason. Yeah. Um, well, kind of, maybe, actually. Yeah, to kind of take over, really. Take what's hers. Take what's okay. hers, you know. Yes. Come um, on, Deborah. Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she, um, she, on surface, oh, I don't want to say too much, but on surface, I feel like she's come back to take over. But I feel like, there's another reason beneath the surface that tugs more at her heartstrings that okay. I don't even think she would like to admit. Damn, you know, you know Nina. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> That's character development right there. I love that. You know her. Yeah. And I feel like she really gives that representation yeah. that you, you mentioned is so important to see. Like she can be the CEO. Yeah. She can rule. She can yeah. make big decisions in the boardrooms, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. But on the side of that, she looked good every day. Yeah. Like <laughs> Because why not? Because now I need to look good I'm every like, day. Listen, she's going to be CEO of a beauty brand. Right? She needs to represent <laughs> <laughs> it's so any true. opportunity where I can be on screen and be slaying. Yeah. I will take it. So with that being said, what was the prep for the character like? Because obviously, like, yeah. you know, so, so one fact that has been floating around around The Little Mermaid yeah. was that Halle Bailey's uh, red dreads yeah. cost like 250k. Jeez. So was there anything on set where you were like, you know, there was designer clothes. Was, mm -hmm. was you thinking, no, we're going in right now. Was there <laughs> any looks that you're like, yeah, we did that. Ooh, like my favorite look, I will say. Uh, but it's, uh, it's in the uh, season finale episode. Oh, look out for that. Like, that's one of my favorites. I really love that look. 
Okay. And, you know, for me, <coughs> as far as the prep, like, I know these these women. Yeah. I know these, my, my big sister is one yeah, of those women. Like, yeah. I know these. So it wasn't hard for me to pull and be like, okay, this is what I feel like she should look like, act like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not necessarily, and that's why I think she and I differ. Like, I'm not, I don't know, I'm a bit more, like, of an introvert. I'm not okay. like, I'm like a, I'm like a quiet storm. Like, if she were, uh, how do I say that? I'm more, like, I don't have to lead. Okay. Nina's yeah. comfort zone is leading. Yeah. Do you yeah, get what true. I'm saying? Like, yeah. she doesn't feel comfortable if she doesn't lead. Mm. I'm not that person. Like, I don't have to. I don't have to. So are you a middle see. child? Yes. There we go. <laughs> I go off and do my own thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you lot tell me how it goes. Like, I will actually. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and that's where we differ. Um, but it wasn't hard for me to, like, be like, oh, I don't. I know that one of my girlfriends is just texting me right now. She's one of those girls. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Literally, you yeah. know, so um, the prep wasn't hard for me. You know, it was just making sure that, like, you know, that everyone gets it because I wanted to make sure that this girl was represented properly because mm. I have not seen enough of her in the UK. Oh, tell them again. I see a lot of her in real life yeah. in the UK, but I don't see a lot of her on screen in yeah. the UK, and that's a problem. I love that. You know, so I want to make sure she was represented properly. Definitely. And there was something I heard you say in another interview, which warmed my heart. It was you obviously watching the show with your mum, but also watching it with your gran. And when she heard the Yoruba, she was yeah. like, ah, is this my people? Yeah. <laughs> she was actually sleeping or pretend sleeping. Sometimes she's... Sometimes. <laughs> Come on, gran. <laughs> She's oh, a lot. Bless her. I get, sometimes when she want, doesn't want to even engage, she'll just act like she's asleep. So she. <laughs> <laughs> so we're watching the show, and she was like, kind of into it, but like, okay, let me take a moment. And then they started speaking Yoruba, and she literally woke up and was like, da -da -da -da, and then we started asking questions about, oh, oh she's sleeping with the, da -da -da, and started commenting, especially on Claudia. Claudia was her like one that she would comment on. Oh about. wow! <laughs> but like that moment, as long as I've been doing what I've what I'm doing, like I have never had that. Moment. It was just so amazing. And so many people are like, oh, I binged it. My mom binged it. Mm. My grandma binged it. My friend binged it. Like, so many people are just enjoying it. Like, yeah. that is just, it really warms my heart, you know? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you can see the stush African aunties. Go yeah. to any hall party, you'll yeah. see those aunties. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You can see that, you know, there's all these, that you know, women that are excelling in yeah. the office. Like, yeah. it's... It is relatable, but what yeah. I absolutely loved, and especially like credit to uh, the creator, mm. Abby J, mm. she wasn't afraid to call out or discuss some of the issues that are in the black community. For example, colorism yep. needs to be said, especially yep. in the beauty industry. That's yep. such a huge thing. So yep. for you, what do you think will be and should be the big takeaways from the show? It's, it's hard for me because I feel like with all of my art, like I, I put it out into the I know my intentions, but like some people take things from it that I'm like, yo, I didn't even notice that. Do you get me? So like, but what I hope people take away from it, um, one is that because like I said, like this is a representation of a Black British family that we don't, we either. I mean, I haven't seen it before, yeah. uh, you know, on um, out of the UK, but like, you know, I don't think it's been done before, mm. and I just think it's well overdue. Yes, you know? of course. And so I think, one, I would want people to take that. Mm. I would want people to take away that it's for everyone. Just like, you know, uh, shows and films that don't center around um, people of color yeah. are somehow assumed to be for everyone. This is something that is for everyone. Just because we're, you know, predominantly black cast doesn't mean it's just for black people. Exactly. It's for everyone. Everyone can take something from it. You know, and I think it would be a beautiful way to step into our world, see what you know what I mean, see yeah. what we're like, see what the, and have some fun, you know. Definitely. Um. So yeah, I think though the colorism thing is something that we need to be talking more about. One hundred percent. Um. It's a really touchy thing, but it's something that I'm so glad that we didn't leave out. I don't yeah. think it would have been realistic for us to leave that out. That's so true. We're talking about the beauty industry. Um. But yeah, it's just, I just, there's so many things I want people to like notice and take away, but those are the things that come to mind. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. And can we just add that the progress of the show in such a short amount of time is incredible. So, of course, it had its debut on Amazon Prime, yeah. but then it went to IV, ITVX, yeah. which is the, the online downloadable player yeah. for ITV. Yeah. But the fact that it is moving to ITV1 yes. is huge because not every show mm. gets that opportunity to mm. have that kind of debut on, on the, the player, mm. but then also on TV. Mm. So... For you, how does it feel to know that this is going to be a primetime yeah. TV show? To be honest with you... In the UK, might I add. Yeah, to be honest with you, I feel like it makes sense. I feel like we put out a beautiful project. Yeah. And I feel like it is getting the love that it is due. Oof, I think yeah. it deserves it. We deserve it. show deserves it. And that's what I think. Yeah. Come on, that's yeah. right. I love that. <laughs> that's how I feel. That's a simple answer is, for yeah. what it is. It's good. Yeah. Let's watch it. Honestly, yeah. it deserves that. It's good. I mean, the, the reception all over the world proves it. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. love this show. Like, one of my castmates, Manny, has traveled so much. He loves to travel everywhere that he has gone with the show. It's show he's getting stopped. Oh, I love that. Stopped. Love he it. plays Simon. Literally getting stopped everywhere. You know what I mean? The show is loved. It, there, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not asked about series two. Oh, I love that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it, it is what it is. And I think that we, we deserve it. Richard deserves it. And yeah. so I'm really, really, um, I'm happy for us. Amazing. Amazing. And just to kind of speak about how important it is to keep prevailing. Yeah. Because, you know... It might be unusual to some people that it's gone from Amazon Prime to ITV, mm. but also that's because, you know, in the industry, you have to prove it. Mm. You have to get the numbers. You have to, you know, it takes a lot to get the yeses. Mm. But for you, I'm assuming, and I feel like most creatives know mm. this, is, this industry is not easy. Mm. There's going to be a lot of no's as well. So we can celebrate mm. the wins, mm. but how do you overcome the no's that do come sometimes? Yeah, I mean, you know... I think it's tough because sometimes when you do get the nose or when you do have to prove yourself um, in certain ways, you can't help but consider, am I proving myself because, or having to prove myself or getting this no because this is kind of par for the course? Mm. Am I getting this no or having to prove myself because of certain factors like my skin color, like oh, my gosh. sex and all these things? Um, and so it, it's a tough thing to deal with, you know, because you do see certain groups of people get yeses not as uh, difficult, you know, as yep. certain as other people. Yep. Um, and so how I deal with it, oof. yeah, some 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 things are harder than 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 others because and that's why like to your question that you asked me a second ago, like for me, I feel like we've made a good product. Yes. We deserve to be on TV and you know, it's kind of what it is. And so I think, you know, just knowing myself and knowing what I put out there and knowing when it's good and knowing what I deserve and knowing what my work deserves is is a main way that I deal with the no's and I deal with, you know, the having to prove myself, knowing that I'm not proving myself to anyone. Yeah. I know the, the excellence that I put out there, the work that I put in. And when I'm having an off day, I know that too. Fair. But I'm like, listen, that... That outfit doesn't deserve to be rated. <laughs> that, you get me? Like, you asked me about my first uh, work that I did. Yeah. Like, don't even watch it. Don't even watch it. Well, yeah. <laughs> don't watch it. You tick. Move don't on. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm very, like, I'm very real with myself, you know? That's good. And I know when I do something that is, you know, like, okay, that was a little practice run. And I know when I when something is good. Yeah. And this is good. And Oof. so it deserves what it deserves. And so that's where we are, and I feel like rightfully so. Deserving and mm -hmm. just, oh, yeah, that, I think that's the best space. word to use. It's so deserving yeah, of this placement. Yeah. And uh, people are already saying it's like the new succession. Listen. Which is think, a huge compliment, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it is a huge compliment. I mean, I personally haven't seen succession. Oh, succession. my gosh. I haven't. You need to watch succession. I know. <laughs> but the thing is, every single person who has watched the show is a huge fan of it. There's not been one person that I've come across that's watched that show and been like, eh, yeah. no one. So it's a beautiful, big compliment. Mm. And I think that it's in it's human nature for people to, when something is new, 
they want to have a reference of like, okay, but what is it like yeah. so I can understand it? Yeah. But I think that, you know, Bridges is a story and it's a project on its own. And I think, oh God, yeah. I think yeah. when people watch it, they will see like, actually, it's a different thing and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. You know, even though there might be similar things, it's a different thing. Oh yeah, don't you get know? me wrong. It's no, it, it's nothing like Succession. <laughs> <laughs> Succession is mad, but, <laughs> but in the sense of like the fan base behind it, yeah, that's what I that, I look forward to seeing for Riches I that. because that was what four seasons deep and yeah. had us in Every a chokehold. Single person that's watched that show has been like, I love. There's not not. It's like it's like New York. You either really love New York, yeah, or like you're like, nah, I'll never go there. Yeah, again. like yeah. there's no there's no middle ground. Like yeah. Succession, every single person is like, I love this show. Yeah. I'm dedicated. I'm in there. Like, I rewatched it as well <sighs> to prepare for the next series, and that's how I feel about yeah. Riches. I'm like, no, 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 no. If the new se- if when series when okay. series two comes, I'm gonna be like, okay, let me go back, mm-hmm. make sure I'm up to date mm-hmm. with everyone, mm-hmm. so I know what's happening next. Yeah, and because every time I watch it, I I see something new. Do you really? Every, even me. Even me. That's crazy. Every time I watch, I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't notice. So you got ha- you got to love a re rewatchable series as well because you got the little nuggets. I'm yeah. one of those people that goes on YouTube and I'm like, please explain the ending. <laughs> like, I'm that girl. <laughs> explain it to me. I'll be watching these at my work. I'm like, oh my god, that's what that means. <laughs> Literally, I'm, like, I'm sure there's gonna be so many more of those. Yes. What did it mean when Nina said? <laughs> oh my god, and they crack me up like the reenactment reenactments. Literally, this one, this one actor, he's like a comedian and actor. He does yeah. like reenactments all the time on on, uh, on Instagram, and I'm just like cracking up watching them. Like literally, the reviews make me laugh so oh, I much. Love the Twitter that. Com- like it's just so much love. Like yeah. it just yeah, it's been beautiful. You're all representing, which is Thank beautiful. You. I Thank can you. see so many of my friends in the, like in that. She's like her. He's like him. Yeah. Got it. Like, yeah. I love stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but we've come to near the end of our chat. And this is my favorite part because it's where we get to be inspired by beautiful, incredible, oh, talented God. women like yourselves. Oh, and uh, we drop those top tips to make it in the mainstream. So, <gasps> Deborah, yes. do you have five, five top tips to make it in the mainstream? Okay. Go on. Get, get ready, girl. <laughs> One. And I'm going to say it because I'm Nigerian. There's a saying, face your fronts. Uh-huh. <laughs> Basically, mind your own. Yeah. Mind your own business. Face, don't try to be like this person or that person. Don't be trying to get in their lane, do their lane. Be inspired by people, but face your fronts. Like, literally focus on your goals and what you want to do because mm-hmm. you don't make any waves by doing the same things that have already been done. Facts. You know, like, you have to dare to do something different someone different you know and and not getting into all the mess and the and the and the nonsense you know mm. but really really keeping that passion for your art and just facing your front well, that is what <laughs> <laughs> yep i hear that too um hmm. my mom has a saying dress how you dress how you want to be addressed oh my mom says that Oh, I and need to meet your mom. Like, I love her. Oh my gosh, she's <laughs> everything. Um, but yeah, like, don't be afraid to shine. Mm. I think a lot of people like dim their light. One hundred afraid of judgment from people. They're afraid of like standing out too much. Or people being like, oh my god, like who do you think you are? Yeah, stand out. Stand out. If you want to wear like a, a step above the dress code. Wear a step above the drip. Yeah. Don't be afraid to stand out because the things that you're trying to dim can be the very things that, you know, are needed to get you noticed. Not, yeah. not that that should be your, um, your, your MO, but like, just don't be afraid to stand out. Yeah, and of be course. your unique self and just, you know, stand out. So that's two. Three. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Be mindful of the company. Oh, love that was from the start of this chat. I love that. Be mm-hmm. mindful of the company you keep. Because people, if you don't have the right people around you, they can really, really bring you down, distract yeah. you, all kinds of things. Know where every single person's heart is around you. Mm. It's either hot or it's cold. It's never lukewarm. That's the way I feel. It's wow. either hot or it's cold. You know, and so 
just being mindful of where someone's heart and it could change and it mm. could and there may be a different strategy of how to deal with you know um someone who you don't really feel connected with like maybe it's like oh take space for a second yes maybe it's you know cut it off all the way maybe it's like okay stay in my life but i don't share this with you i don't mm. share what auditions i'm going on i don't you know whatever but just be mindful mm, that was deep take a second step out of yourself observe and be mindful of what you observe and don't ever let anyone's gaslight you or question you of what you that's actually number four Know what, don't let anyone cause you to question your gut. Oh, yeah. And your discernment. It is the greatest gift. Yeah. For you to be able to follow what is in here. And we all, we all have it. Yeah. But some of us don't listen to it. You have to listen to it. Definitely. Um, that's what I was saying to you earlier about like, you know, my thoughts on people moving to America and all that. If that was what your gut said, yeah. do it. But if your gut is saying something, because... Everyone might be going through the front door and your gut is saying there's a window in the back Oof. that you could climb through. Girl. But if you're not listening, no, it's true. It's not li- if you're not listening, you might miss that. Mm. You know what I mean? And so listen to that gut. That's the fourth one. I think that's four. That was four, yeah. Five. Oh, I feel like I got it. You did well. You did well. Come on, number five. Let's see. Um, <laughs> five. Take up space. Oh, I like that. Yeah, take up space, you know. Like, don't... And it kind of goes with something I said earlier. Like, you don't have to play small. I'm not saying be, uh, be obnoxious mm. and knock people over, yeah. like, with your personality. <laughs> like, you don't have to do all that, you know. You can definitely, like, just have a presence about you, yeah. you know. But but whatever your thing is, like, do that thing. Like, yeah. don't just take up space. Don't let people who are jealous or who are intimidated by your light cause you to dim it. Yeah. You know, take up space, be your own person, ask questions, you know, um, know the things you deserve and know, you know, your value and your worth. Don't look for that. I'm going to a six one. Don't <laughs> look for that value and worth in anyone else, mm. in anyone else. You literally, you can get little like hits of affirmation and stuff like that. And that is fine. And it's human. And it's beautiful. Yeah, you know you want people around you who lift you up, but at the end of the day, at your core, it cannot be based on that. Mm. It cannot be based on the roles you get, the industry, the you know whoever you're seeing, who you're around, what you're wearing. It cannot be based in that. Mm. That's fickle, and your confidence will come and go with that. Definitely, it has to be based on what you know about yourself, and people will believe what you know about yourself every single time. Pastor Deborah has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was saying. That's my six. <laughs> my six. You were worried about five, but gave us six. Listen, I love I, that. So I was like, well, we're in six now. We might as well <laughs> keep on driving. This <coughs> honestly, I am so inspired. I honestly oh, believe yeah. God brings me into conversations to hear things that yeah. I needed to hear. Yeah. And this is that moment. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm sure there's people that are listening yeah. as well, feeling the same way as yeah. well. So thank you Bless. so much for joining us on the mainstream. Um, I'm so excited for everyone to get a, get a chance to see yeah. Riches, which is out on the 30th of June on ITV1. Whoop, 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 whoop. Love that. <laughs> um, so how can we follow you? How can we stay up to date? How can we keep celebrating yeah. you? So my main uh, social media handle is on Instagram. It's... It's it's Deborah. Okay. Literally, I t- every time I say it, I'm like it's Deborah. They're like Deborah. No, no, it's so I T S D B O R A H. So yes, that's a great handle, by the yeah, way. How did you I, get that? I got it when Instagram first started. I to this day I'm like, wow, you yeah. did that. Girl. All the other Deborahs are hating. <laughs> snatched it. I didn't even snatch my own name. I didn't even snatch my own full name, but I snatched the one. Fair enough. But it's yeah. Deborah. It's hi- she's Literally. here. <laughs> Literally. So that's your insight. Is it Twitter as well? Twitter. I'm on Twitter, so first and last name. I'm okay, not cool. as active on Twitter, but Instagram is like where... Things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that, but I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, said yeah. that. That's my opinion. <laughs> Things have changed. Uh, <laughs> well, we are following. We are thank watching. You. We're so excited to watch you thank all you. shine on thank Riches. You. Thank you. And thank you for joining me on the mainstream. Thank you.